So cryptography, uh, we said, uh, uh, remember last time when we, uh, we covered x800 standard, uh, we saw that uh, uh, to uh, set up a um, secure system, you need to uh, basically take care of two things, security services and security mechanisms. Okay. Security services is basically a family of, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a security service, um, examples of security service we covered. Uh, authentication. Authentication, access control. Okay. Now, how to implement it is through uh, security mechanisms. So, security mechanisms are technical uh, controls, like, um, I don't know, it might be uh, uh, installing a uh, intrusion detection system, firewall, uh, whatever. But uh, uh, we, we, we saw that most of those security mechanisms are based on cryptography. So, cryptography is really the basics of uh, yeah, and providing security. So today it is um, an overview uh, of uh, cryptography. So the idea of cryptography is you have a, uh, a message in clear uh, that you need to send to somewhere else. Uh, not really send, so you need to uh, basically protect. Uh, so here this is communication. There is another scenario. So basically you need to encrypt it. You transform it in a way that will be difficult to understand from someone watching uh, the, uh, the traffic. Okay. And then, so this process of transformation is called encryption, and at the exception side, we need to transform it back to the uh, plain text, and uh, this is called decryption. Uh, so, um, it, uh, the good, I mean, cryptography is used in two things secure communication, this is the major and use of cryptography. So, you need to send it through, you need to send data through um, uh, uh, an insecure medium. And all the mediums we have so far are kind of insecure because you'll send uh, uh, any uh, data, bits, and anybody can see those bits. Okay? Any, anybody in the path, okay? whether it's a rat or whether it is a, a, a hop in the, or whether it is the uh, internet service provider. So all those uh, see the bits. Okay? Now, uh, this is an insecure because you can see everything. Okay. So the goal here of secure communication, uh, secure communication is to implement a virtual trusted channel. So by transforming this data in a way which is inintelligible by uh, uh, observers, basically you are uh, uh, implementing a virtual trusted channel. You are implementing a trusted channel. Okay. So yeah, it's to, for secure communication, cryptography. The other um, uh, uh, goal or use case of cryptography is um, secure storage, okay, and this is more and more common now. So instead of storing data in plain text, which is uh, what we are, uh, I mean, most of people are doing, basically storing data in their, in their hard disk, uh, and it is in plain text, basically. Okay? Uh, the only protection you have is the, uh, you know, the account protection, basically login, password, etc. But you know, there is there is a couple of there are a couple of attacks. Which, uh, when you have physical access to uh, the device, you can, if you are using Windows, for example, you can boot from another OS like Linux, okay? And it can be from a uh, uh, live uh, CD or live USB. You know what's like. So basically, you have the all the OS uh, implement in, uh, in that USB. Okay? You don't need to uh, to, uh, to to to, to format or install that OS. You will have it in the, in the USB. And if you log in or if you boot from a different OS, you will have access to all the, uh, uh, all the data. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is a second scenario of uh, using cryptography. So basically, secure communication and secure storage. And the services provided by cryptography can be, they can be some of the, these are the essential ones. So confidentiality, authentication, integrity, and non replication. So I guess we discussed enough of these properties. So confidentiality is to uh, keep the information uh, uh, secret and uh, not uh, accessible by uh, anybody, just authorized people. Uh, authentication, uh, verifying the identity of users. Okay, this is also uh, provided by uh, cryptography. Okay, integrity. Uh, making sure that the uh, data is modified only by authorized uh, users. And uh, non repudiation So, again, what is non repudiation uh, I mean, denying it, but you said something. Not denying. Not denying. 
This is repudiation. Yeah, this is repudiation. So basically, a repudiation by itself is not a secure property. It's not security property. Okay? Mm -hmm. It is the opposite. Okay? It's an attack. A repudiation is an attack. Basically, a repudiation attack when you do something and then you are able to deny it. Okay? This is repudiation. But non-repudiation, if you have non-repudiation property in your system, it means no user can deny do, uh, having done something. It can't be blocked by another entity. Not blocked. Not blocked. Mm -hmm. So basically, as an administrator, you can provide evidence of anything happening in your system. Okay? If somebody sent an email or sent a packet, okay, you can uh, uh, provide evidence that he did it. So even if he say, no, I didn't do it, you will provide evidence okay, that uh, he actually did it. So non-reputation is the uh, security property. Okay. Um, uh, so this is uh, this is how uh, cryptography components here. So basically, we have the plain text, the encryption transformation. Uh, when you encrypt a plain text, you obtain what we call a cipher text. Then at the uh, uh, destination side, you have decryption and uh, back to uh, the uh, plain text. So in the uh, terminology, we have plain text, which is the original data, not encrypted. <coughs> Cipher text is the encrypted data. Okay? Uh, encryption is the encryption algorithm for the uh, yeah, producing cipher text from plain text. Not necessarily an algorithm. Encryption, it means the transformation. Okay? Decryption, reverse process. Uh, now, the algorithm is the process of encrypting and decrypting information. Uh, and then the key, again, uh, cryptography, uh, it's all about, uh, so all the transformation, they need uh, a key, okay? Uh, so a key is a kind of random value. When we say key, it is uh, a value that is, that is difficult to guess, okay? Because if it is easy to guess, it's not, yeah, the <laughs> key is not a secret key anymore, okay? Uh, and the cipher is the, Basically, when you combine encryption with the algorithm, the encryption algorithm is called the cipher. Okay. Now, two types of cryptography, symmetric key cryptography and asymmetric key uh, cryptography. Who knows the difference between symmetric key cryptography and asymmetric key cryptography? Mm. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, just to know, but we will cover it anyway. Uh, because this is basically the basics of uh, cryptography. So, sorry? I should have an idea of it, but the symmetric key is uh, both keys and both parties are the same key. Yeah. But uh, in uh, asymmetric key, everyone has his, his own key. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, okay, symmetric key basically. Oh, so basically, the symmetric key, uh, both the, 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 the uh, encryption and decryption, it is done by the same key, okay? The encryption process. The encryption process, we need the same uh, uh, key value, okay? Uh, so basically, this is why we call it shared key, okay? Because it is shared between uh, these two. Uh, shared and secret, because it should be, be only known by the uh, sender and receiver, okay? Uh, yeah. Now, sometimes, uh, sometimes we need what we call a, a certification authority or a trusted authority. Okay, uh, in most of uh, secure operations, secure uh, communications, but in uh, symmetric key cryptography, even the trusted yani, uh, entity does not know about the security. It's only really the sender and receiver. Okay. So in symmetric key cryptography, the same key is used uh, by the sender for encryption and by the receiver for uh, Decryption, this is why we call it uh, shared. Now, in uh, asymmetric key uh, cryptography, uh, basically every user will have two keys. Every user will have two keys. One private, one public. Okay? So basically, the, the, the private key is supposed to be known only by uh, the owner of the key. Okay? The private key should be uh, uh, only known by the, uh, by the owner. Uh, yani here the private key, okay, it's known by the owner, but it is also, uh, 
No, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the trusted entity. Does it, does it need to know about the private key? It's public, so... No, 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 no it's private. So we have private and public. Private key and public key of Bob. So this is Bob. It has a, 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 a public key and a private key. Now, okay, the public key, this is clear, it is public. So everybody who needs to communicate with Bob, they need to know the, uh, that public key. Okay. Now the private key, it is supposed to be known only by Bob. Okay. Now, uh, trusted entity, normally it doesn't even know about well, the, well, the private key. trusted entity here? Here it is not there, but, but uh, it, oh, you don't see it, but in a realistic scenario you need mm. uh, certification. Yani, uh, yes. yani, uh, uh, trusted entity. Why you need? Maybe if, if you want to do a time stamping or something, that needs more than the two parties. No, not really. Generating keys. Sorry? Maybe generating keys. Generating keys, it can be done by what? Managing. Hmm? Managing, key. yeah, managing, yes. Because, uh, okay, uh, public keys, if you need to, uh, to, uh, to communicate with uh, Gmail, for example, you need, it's public key. It's public, it's public so everybody knows about it. Hmm. But, who tells me this is really the public key of, of, uh, of Gmail? So you need to have the trusted entity that will distribute those public keys. Because if uh, I mean, um, you claim that you have the public key of Gmail, if an attacker claims to have the public key of, uh, of Gmail, for example, it's a problem. Because uh, if you send it, that attacker can decrypt the data. Can decrypt the data and then to not let uh, any raise uh, attention, he will forward the traffic to uh, to, uh, to Gmail. So we will be basically a man in the middle, basically. someone in the middle of the of the traffic. So basically here, uh, yeah, uh, you need here a trusted uh, trusted entity, uh, but for the moment think of it as private key known only by uh, the, the owner. And the public key is, uh, is available to everyone. Uh, yes. How can the attacker uh, decrypt the data with the public key? Yeah, yeah, here, and another uh, uh, point here. So the, the, the diagram, it, it shows exactly this. The good thing with uh, asymmetric key cryptography is that when you encrypt the data with one key, you can decrypt it with another key. So one key is used for encryption, one, one key is used for decryption. So if you use the private key here, here it's in this scenario, Alice wants to send something to Bob. Yeah. Okay? So what it, what it needs? It needs the public key of Bob, okay? which is public, so it's supposed to, to know. So it takes, that, uh, it takes the data and encrypts it with the public key. Now, in order to decrypt the, uh, that same data, you can do it only by the corresponding private key. So see here, encryption with the public key and decryption with the private key. And here, here is the point. This is one difference between symmetric and asymmetric. In symmetric key cryptography, the key is random. You can generate any set of bits, any sequence of bits. Let's say if the key is of size, uh, I don't know, 56 bits. Okay? You can pick the bits as you want, just random. Okay? Now, for asymmetric key cryptography, it's not the case. Yani you need to pick the uh, public key and a private key, and they should satisfy certain mathematical properties. They should have a relationship between them. Why? Because if you decrypt, if you encrypt the data with, for example, a public key, you need to uh, uh, decrypt it with uh, the private key, and there should be a mathematical relationship between them. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay? Because this is this is very uh, very challenging. If you encrypt with some key and then you decrypt it with another. You need to have a special relationship, a special, يعني, uh, uh, mathematical relationship between the public and private. Okay. Yes. Since there is a relation between them, how difficult is it to guess the private key using the local key? Prime numbers. It is the same thing. It is computationally infeasible. It is computationally infeasible. Meaning what? It's not impossible. It's not impossible. You can do it. Okay. But. Yani you will need an infinite amount of processing, of space, of time, whatever. Okay, so it is. Yani here the 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 uh, the um, 
the strength of asymmetric key cryptography in the generation, the key generation. This is where it is really. But the um, the encryption, the encryption, the algorithm is very simple. Very simple. We're gonna see. Okay. And there are several algorithms to do that. Now, gener key generation is difficult, but the encryption, it's not difficult. Okay. Now, in uh, in in symmetric key cryptography, key generation is very simple. Okay. Just random bits. But the encryption and decryption, you're gonna see it. It's very, يعني, it's it's uh, the the algorithm is complex. By the way, uh, when I say the um, uh, the uh, encryption and decryption with the يعني, uh, pub, private and public in asymmetric cryptography is uh, يعني, simple. When I say simple, it doesn't mean it's quick. Okay, <laughs> it is the algorithm is simple, but it can take it. It is slow. It is slow. The uh, symmetric cryptography is the opposite. It is complex, but it is fast. Okay. So the challenge in again the challenge in asymmetric cryptography is in the key generation, while in symmetric cryptography the challenge in is in the encryption algorithm. Okay. Uh, sir, yes. You said there is a mathematical uh, problem. Yeah. yeah. As we uh, took, uh, as I remember, in two five, as I said, two five four. Yes. Generating the private key from the public. Yeah, you, you can do it. Yeah, but, uh, generating. But, uh, but what, what? Generating, generating the, the public from the private. There, there's a math uh, yeah. But the opposite is uh, Yeah, oh, yes. Even if you know how. Yes. But this is not, uh, basically, this is the easy part. And even if we do it, um, because only the uh, owner knows the private key. Okay, so if it is easy to generate the public key, we don't care. Okay, but the opposite uh, uh, direction, if you have the public key and you need to generate the public private key, it is not simple for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so asymmetric key cryptography uses two separate keys, one public for encryption and one private for decryption. Um, yeah, this summarizes it. So basically, uh, symmetric key cryptography, uh, it uses one secret key. Asymmetric key cryptography uses uh, public and private key. Another summary. Now, okay, maybe it's good to uh, discuss it now. Okay, we have two ways of cryptography, two types of, of cryptography. Basically, uh, although it's early to ask this, which one is better? Asymmetric. From, from this description, from this description, asymmetric is better. It is better. Why? Because there is no risk of transferring the key. Sorry? There is no risk of transferring the key. Yeah, there is, if you have a secret shared key, you have this important step of sharing, exchanging the keys. And you need to do it in a secret way, and in a secure way. Okay? Because remember, when you initiate the communication, you, you send everything in plain text. You don't have a, you cannot encrypt because you don't. Uh, have yet a key, okay? So you do it in, in, in plain text, and at the same time you need to exchange a key in a secret way. How you can do it? So there are algorithms, not only this. So there are algorithms for key exchange okay? or protocols, DFL, for example. Yeah. There are algorithms for uh, key exchange, but this is an additional step, and it is might be target of some attacks. Okay. While in the uh, asymmetric, you don't need, you don't have that requirement. Basically, the public is public, the private, you don't need to send it to anybody. So you are fine. Okay. Now, if you tell me, which, what are we using currently? Yani, uh, let's say if you were using HTTPS, what kind of algorithm you are using? Huh? Actually, it's Sure. So again, from from this description, you tell me, okay, we'll use asymmetric key and we are fine, we are happy. But it's slow. It is slow. Yeah. yeah. The problem with asymmetric key it is slow. Okay. So this is why, basically, in, in in real scenario, we use both. In HTTPS, for example, we use both. We use asymmetric and symmetric, and we use asymmetric for what? Yes. For key exchange. So we use asymmetric key cryptography for key exchange. One we uh, once we exchange the keys. We, we use symmetric key cryptography for data and encryption and communication because it is faster. Okay. So we use both. Okay. 
Now, uh, uh, Kirchhoff uh, principle. Uh, here, uh, it says what? Based on the principle, one should always assume that the adversary knows the encryption algorithm. The encryption decryption algorithm. Okay? So it is a common yeah, a principle in security in general. The opponent, the attacker, knows the system, knows the algorithm. But what he does not know is the key. The key. He does not know the key. So the security of the system is based on the uh, difficulty to guess the key. Okay? Why is this? Why we don't use any very obscure uh, algorithms for encryption and decryption? And then we make it known only by uh, the people, the two users who will communicate there. Why? Wow. Oh, compatibility. Compatibility, yes. So basically, we need something. We need an encryption algorithm that is known by everybody. If you need to implement, for example, a web browser, or you need to implement a protocol, or HTTPS, or whatever, okay? You need, uh, you don't need to uh, each time update the list of uh, you know, uh, algorithms, the encryption algorithms. You need those algorithms to be uh, known by everybody. And then the, you know, the secrecy is based on secrecy of the keys. Okay? Uh, so basically for compatibility, we have this, this uh, principle for compatibility. Uh, another saying of uh, Scott Shannon uh, from the information the uh, theory, the enemy knows the system by default. Okay? We assume that for compatibility uh, issues. Okay? Uh, so this is to construct to security through obscurity. What is security through obscurity? Uh, obscurity means uh, evading or uh, disobey, uh, making the enemy think in another way. No. No. Security by obscurity basically you have uh, you have you have a system to secure. Okay. One principle, one layer of security, you might uh, hide the implementation details. Okay. Just make it secret. Okay, so that an attacker, if he want to attack uh, attack your system, he needs first to know what kind of algorithm you are using, what kind of system you are using. This is security by obscurity. But it is good to do security by obscurity. By obscurity. If you have, uh, if you can do it, it's fine. But it should not uh, be a problem for compatibility issue. This is the first thing. Okay, and the second thing, you should not rely a hundred percent on security by obscurity because. Uh, I mean, now uh, attackers can reverse engineer almost anything. Okay, reverse engineering. You know, you know the principle. So reverse engineering. You have a kind of black box system, and you need to uh, understand it backwards. Okay, by testing, by uh, any uh, I don't know reverse engineering tricks, you will uh, understand it back. Okay. Now uh, a lot of uh, protocols, a lot of uh, in particular industrial systems. Industrial control systems, they rely on obscurity, still on obscurity. Basically, they will use, uh, they, will not, they will not use cryptography, encryption. They will use plain text protocol, and then they will, say, they will use a kind of uh, encoding. So you know the difference between encoding and encryption. So basically, encoding without key, just transformation, okay? Like, uh, like, uh, like uh, compression. Compression is a kind of encoding, okay? So they use simple encoding. This is easy. Why? Because you don't need the key, you don't need to share a key, it's less headache, okay? Just one algorithm and it's fine. And they will use one, their own algorithm, known only by them, okay? And they will be good, okay? The problem is, now, with uh, yani, yani skilled attackers, they can capture the traffic, and they can investigate and reverse engineer the uh, encoding protocol, and they will find out. They will find out about the, uh, the encoding algorithm, and it happened. It happened in several uh, situations, okay? In uh, major, uh, you know, conferences, any uh, hacking conferences, it is very common that you say, okay, I, uh, I was, uh, you know, in the street, and then I saw the, uh, any, the traffic sign uh, is somewhat, somehow connected to one uh, system wirelessly. So they brought their uh, wireless uh, any, uh, uh, receiver, okay, there, and then captured the packets, and then reverse engineered that, and then they understood the uh, communication protocol, and they start sending uh, yani requests on the, and uh, yani send the commands to control the uh, traffic signs. Okay, so they, they, it's very very common. If you don't protect your system uh, very well and you rely on obscurity, 
it might happen. Okay? Reverse engineering is becoming more easier and easier. Okay? So again, security through obscurity is good, but it should not be the only security measure. Okay. So in short words, so security is hiding the implementation? Yeah. Implementation. Making it yani, relying on keeping it secret. Okay, now uh, the last point is about uh, um, uh, cryptanalysis. So cryptanalysis is the opposite of uh, cryptography. Basically, cryptography is the fact of um, encrypting data and making it uh, 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 inintelligible by uh, observers. A cryptanalysis is the opposite. It's to uh, take a cipher text, an encrypted data, and try to uh, yani, uh, retrieve the plain text. So basically, it's breaking cryptography. Cryptanalysis is the science of breaking uh, uh, cryptography. Okay. So there are uh, several attacks. Depends because here cryptanalysis it depends on what. If you need to, uh, yani break, uh, uh, yani the cryptographic algorithm used in certain communication. Or cryptanalysis if you have, for example, um, <coughs> cipher text, and you need to retrieve back the plain text. Okay. So it depends on what. The key. what do you it have? depends the key, the size of the key, and it depends on what do you have. Okay. If you have huge number of samples okay and you have some information about the algorithm and you know the size of the key etc it will be easier to uh, to decrypt but if you just watch the uh, the encrypted data flowing okay you just have that it will be possible to decrypt it but it is very 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 hard okay so keep the analysis attack we divide them into uh, four situations so the first situation which is the hardest basically you just have a cipher text and you need to retrieve back the plain text, nothing more. Just a cipher text and you need to uh, retrieve it back. So here basically, if you know the encryption and the decryption al uh, yani algorithm, it's a matter of what? Time is brute forcing. It's a matter of brute force. Okay. Try trying all the possible uh, keys. And, uh, uh, and here, uh, how to know? Because, uh, okay, you have a cipher text. Okay, you have a cipher text. It's a bit. There are bits. Right? Then, then you uh, you uh, use a key. You know the algorithm. Assuming you know the algorithm, and you use a key and you decrypt the data and you obtain some some uh, other data. How to know that this is the right data? You, you know, for example, they use a certain header. If you get that header back, you can yes. Yeah. So basically, you need to have those uh, kind of uh, uh, indications. Okay. So you need to know what type of traffic is being exchanged. Okay. If it is, for example, HTTP, you know is when you decrypt the day, you know, decrypt one uh, cipher text, you would see some, uh, for example, the str string HTTP. You can use the string HTTP as an indicator. Okay. So basically, you can automate it. Uh, use one key, check the uh, obtained uh, plain text, search for HTTP. If you find it, you are good. If you don't find it, go to the next key, etc. So uh, keywords might be used in that. Okay. So here you might you, you need to have an idea about what is the type of traffic being exchanged to be able to to tell if you uh, you found the key or not. Okay. So very difficult if you have just the cipher text is just brute force. Okay. Now the second scenario, the attacker has access to a plain text. So basically, same thing. The attacker here has a cipher text and he needs to uh, decrypt. It. Okay. So in this scenario. And this is the second uh, situation. The attacker has access to a plain text cipher text pair. Mm. Yeah, he has basically the plain text and the corresponding cipher text, just one sample. Okay. Basically, this will allow him to test. Okay. If, for example, he he start to have an idea about the algorithm, he can check it with that previous pair. Okay. So, but here it's one single pair. One single pair. It is, and also. He doesn't choose which pair, it's just any pair. Okay, important. The third scenario, here the uh, attacker, again, has a cipher text, he needs to decrypt it, and he has access to, has a pair plain text, cipher text, so pair plain from choosing plain text, yeah. So he has access to the encryption algorithm only once. Yeah, so he can choose, he can choose one plain text and get the uh, corresponding cipher text 
only once, not uh, uh, because if he has access to uh, the whole algorithm, that's it. He can decrypt whatever he wants. Okay, but here he just can do it only once. So he picks one uh, message and then he uh, decrypts it with uh, he encrypts it with the uh, with the algorithm. So here, if he has the the choice, what kind of uh, plain text he he would like to choose? Maybe zero zero zero. Yeah, some some special one. For example, yeah, zero 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 or one 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 one. This have more chance to reveal some properties about the about the algorithm. Okay. So this is chosen plain text. You have access to the uh, to the um, encryption algorithm. And here you see it. He, here he has more chance to decrypt it than the previous uh, cases. This is the the third uh, situation. The fourth situation. The attacker chooses the ciphertext and decrypts it. Now the attacker, again, has a ciphertext, he needs to decrypt it. And here he has access to the decryption process, again, only once. So he can choose one ciphertext and he can decrypt it, but only that, that one. Okay? And this is basically uh, even better than the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the previous one. Yeah. So this is called chosen ciphertext. Uh, yeah, so this is um, this is a very brief overview of uh, of um, cryptography. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, there was no, wasn't there a randomness in the ciphertext ciphertext uh, when you convert to a plain text to ciphertext? There was a randomness, uh, so it's not always the same uh, encryption. Uh, randomness. But what do you mean? Here, so yeah, there are a lot of uh, properties. So basically. Uh, what you are talking about, if you have a um, plain text and then you encrypt it, you obtain uh, some uh, ciphertext, so a set of bits. Okay? Mm. Now the point is, if you go back to your plain text and you change, change just one bit, now what you are talking about is all the uh, uh, ciphertext will completely change, right? Mm. This is called what? This is what kind of, what kind of problem? One, one time key. No, 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 no. What kind of profit is this? When you change one bit, all the ciphertext will completely shuffle. Be completely sharp. This is called the avalanche, avalanche property. Yeah. So you change one thing, all the ciphertext will uh, will completely change. Okay. But here's the point: if you just if you change uh, one bit, if when, when you change one bit, okay, and all the bits change, is it good? No, no. It's not good. No, it is not good because when you change a bit, all of them change. Basically, you you would know. Because it's the opposite. So what is the right uh, right number of bits that needs to change? Not random. In the middle. In the middle. So we should half of them should change. Okay. To be uh, okay. So this is the the, the avalanche and all uh, all yani cipher yani encryption all that we have that problem. Okay. Yes. For the last case, is it already solved? Since he can. Uh... No, no. Yani <laughs> he will say here. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, you will uh, take that uh, ciphertext and put it here, and that's it. No. <laughs> Basically, this is done before. This is done before. So you have the chosen text before. Yes. Uh, who who's responsible for assigning keys and changing them, and how often do they change? Ah, okay. So this is the algorithm. So, for example, when you use HTTPS, HTTPS, SSL. Okay. Yes. You first thing to do is to agree on what kind of uh, algorithm you're gonna use. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, for for key exchange for the uh, yani encryption etc. Okay. Once you set it, once you set it, the, the 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 choice of the uh, of the key in symmetric key cryptography it is uh, it is uh, yani, uh, it is random. So any entity from the two can sh can choose. It so doesn't matter. Okay. okay. It's not from the operating system. It's no. The, the, the OS will, will will do it of course. The, okay. the network, but the HTTP protocol will assign randomly. Will no, 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 no. Basically, when you agree on a key exchange protocol, the HTTPS will ask, for example, the client. Typically, the client. Okay. It will choose randomly one uh, one key. Okay. And then uh, the algorithm or the key exchange algorithm will uh, share that key between the client and the server. Okay. Now. In the HTTPS itself, you will have a property that a property that will tell how for how long it should stay after so that it can refresh. Normally, how how long? Uh, one two eight. No. 
Uh, symmetric key, symmetric key. Certificate itself? No, 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 not certificate. Certificate we know it might stay for years. Okay, for years when you have the certificate. But the symmetric key, symmetric key. In HTTPS it is around five minutes. No. Yes, it's very, very, very frequent. Okay. Yani in the symmetric key, key. Okay. That's it.